got you to develop another project called the wetlands. That wetlands is now calling back to what kind of boat do you need next, in a way. Like, there's that really interesting feedback loop between boat environment, changed environment, changed boat. I mean, it's sort of like this really interesting feedback loop that who, who knows? It, there's no end to it for me. And there's nobody really in charge. It's like the wetland speaking oh. as much so as... So I want to know, like, what's the next design for the boat? Like, what would you think is the next... Kind of, like, what would your boat be for rocking the boat next? We're next actually time? figuring it out now um, during the week that's coming. Um, we kind of meet the needs of the home water program. That's our main concern. So, like, whatever is next for them, whatever project they got coming up, we take that into consideration. Whatever they need the boat to be to have to be built, we take that into consideration also. Now, you guys, um, I was talking to another um, member his name, but he was Marcus, and Marcus was saying you guys actually came up with your own modified design, right? Yeah. The Bronx River. Yeah. Expedition boat. Yeah. Yeah. Triumph. So what's one? Yeah, what's so interesting in that is that like it, was, it was a Connecticut river boat, is that it? Yeah, Connecticut. And then as you use that boat here, you see how this environment's different, how the boat needs to be different. The boat's telling you about the environment. You're going on longer trips. That feedback I just talked about. In fact, you guys don't know this, none of you guys know this, um, but Jeff, who runs the Book of the Job Skills program over the winter, he's a coach from a boat design background, is going to be designing uh, a whole new rowing boat for rocking the boat to start building. Uh, we've been building Whitehalls, the boats that we were in as our kind of standard rowboat, like, yeah. you know, work-a-day rowboat, as opposed to the more specialty boats like, like the Expedition Boat or that, that melon seed skiff there. Um, and He's doing it by interviewing everybody. And one of the things he found, to his surprise, we were talking about this yesterday, he was like, I was talking to the on-water program directors, and it sounds like they more regularly have six people in boats rather than four. And, wow, okay, that's that's new information. I didn't know we were, were doing that, so we need to design a boat that's that's got all the weight, distribution, et cetera, requirements to hold six people based on Coast Guard, you know, <coughs> regulations and so forth. And so, um, whereas the Whitehalls, the 14-footers are, Officially four person boats, although some of you guys were in. You know. But then there's like the waters or the currents communicating, and it's saying, well, this drags more, it's yep. shallower. Yep. We've got a few um, flat bottom boats that we use yeah. for the site. But there's a boat we have for Spartina, which is built for um, specific purpose to plant Spartina in the water. Uh -huh. so really? Which boat is that? Spartina. It's, a, you can, it's in the shed, actually. That's mm -hmm. Check it out. Yeah. And it's a, it's a design traditionally. It's an oyster skiff. Yeah. So this is so good. So just for people who don't know, Spartina is a type of grass. It's a, a very important um, brackish water common reed. And so I mean, in some way, you're now entering into a collaboration between a boat, a current, a reed, an ecosystem, people, and the Spartina growing in our fish tank. Yeah. Well, this is just, I mean, we could easily stay here a whole lot longer. And we, I, I think.